What's up guys, welcome back. Merry Christmas and it's not quite Happy New Year's yet, so we're right in the middle of what I'd probably describe as the Gooch period. It's uh, you know just that little gap between so and so uh, where nothing's really happening there of any importance. Uh, so we're in the Gooch period right now between Christmas and New Year's. So I wanna do just a quick take on my Christmas observations for gig delivery driving. What I saw, what I observed, and what I've picked up that we can take as teachable moments and also learnable lessons for next Christmas period. First and foremost, so across the Christmas period, I wanna do a shout out to DoorDash, the company itself, for giving every Australian DoorDash driver $45 in vouchers, so three $15 vouchers for discounts on their food as a gift, and also the $20 discount vouchers for buying and or replacing uh, merch, I, I guess. So like for new tote bags, new delivery bags, that got sent out to every single driver. So if you have not claimed that stuff in yet, guys, go check your emails, do a dig through. You're gonna find it from DoorDash out to all Australian drivers. That was like 65 bucks. They just plastered out to everyone. So that's great. New tote bag for yourself. That twenty dollars is going to cover that, and as well, forty-five bucks in discounts on food. Um, get yourself some McDonald's and only pay like a couple of bucks for it on the, the delivery fees from there. Now, my first observation this Christmas period is shop and deliver orders. So this was the first full-blown Christmas period that we had shop and deliver up and running properly to the major supermarket chains. So it looked a little bit interesting in my opinion and i'll run through what i observed and what i observed on these takes through so myself out there and also from being the moderator of the doordash australia drivers group uh so i get to read through everything that's happening on that group i, I, I pay attention i read through mostly arguments guys guys stop arguing in the groups stop it just stop arguing about delivery driving um, it doesn't matter who is like the king of uh, the delivery driver groups it's not mortal combat style finishing each other fight to the death like brutality <laughs> like, guys he's, a, he's a going for the kill sometimes so just back off if you're in that group relax i'm moderating it if it goes too far i have to like pull out the comments but all it means is that I read through everything going on, so I read all the stories and how other people are experiencing it. But shop and deliver this year. My observation and take, uh, the Christmas Eve, I was not out delivery driving, but I did show up to a Coles and I saw lines going through the aisles of people trying to get to checkouts. And the self-serve register was about 40 deep. I popped in just to try buy a box of chocolates for my mum as an extra gift on top for Christmas day. Saw the lines, I went, nope. F this and walk there straight out of there, straight the F out of there, man. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not waiting in lines for 30 minutes to buy a box of chocolates. But because I'm observing and I've got a delivery driver mindset around me, I'm like, okay, what that tells me is that anyone doing a shop and deliver order uh, on, you know, Eva Reed's DoorDash, Milk Run, I think is running right now on Woolworths, anyone doing gig work around shop and delivers, if they show up, they power shop through the aisles, I think a lot of items would be missing because people were raiding these supermarkets. And secondly, once you shopped everything, you're stuck in the lines with the consumers as well. So it's not going to be a fast process. So I'd be very interested to hear uh, in the comments, guys, if you're out on Christmas Eve or on the days on the lead up to Christmas Eve doing shop and deliver orders, how was your experience with the lines trying to get through? Was it worth it? Did you stop doing shop and deliver orders? Did you keep doing shop and deliver orders? Let me know your thoughts. But from my observation, it looked like it was not worth doing because of them lines and you're getting paid any extra to wait in them lines. Now, mind you, the gig companies did blast out to us saying, these are our busiest days for shopping. Make sure that you give it a red hot go and go for it and get them shopping orders done. Uh, they weren't offering any extra to do them and those lines made them seem very unattractive to take once I got a glance over them. Realistically, what's the difference between waiting 30 minutes in a restaurant for food to be made and ready for you to take out as opposed to waiting in a supermarket line for 30 minutes to check out the groceries you've just shopped for? The only thing is it's awkward to unassign at that point because you're just abandoning a trolley of groceries. Not a great look, not a great thing to do to that supermarket. Second observation, major shop 
shopping centers. This is a thing I've talked about the last two years as well on Christmases. Major shopping centers, so like your big Westfields or your major shopping centers in the towns that you live in, jam-packed with people Christmas shopping, uh, trying to get parking, always an issue, always a struggle. I, I always say just leave it for the people on bikes, leave it for people on scooters and stuff to zip in, zip out, do them deliveries. Don't waste 10, 15 minutes trying to find a park just to pick up from a restaurant inside a major shopping center. Avoid it like the plague. I say that every year, avoid it like the plague. And I saw the same thing this year. My third observation is an interesting one. So I was out the night before Christmas Eve, uh, just doing some Uber Eats and DoorDash deliveries, multi-apping away, taking the best offers I could get. And I noticed uh, that a couple of restaurants, well, not a couple, most of the restaurants were absolutely slammed from orders coming through. And that's not just from gig work, guys. Uh, there was customers going in ordering without using gig apps. So I had to unassign two orders on the night before Christmas Eve from what I would call reliable restaurants. So these guys are, are rarely ever late having the food ready for me when I arrive, or if I do show up, they've got it there within like one to two minutes. I've just shown up at the right time and they're rushing the food through. But two restaurants I had to want to sign from the night before Christmas Eve because they were under the pump. There was customers filling the store, not delivery drivers, but customers filling the stores, placing orders, and the restaurants couldn't keep up. And I had to want to sign from these restaurants because they said, look, man, it's going to be like a, like a 20, maybe 30 minute wait for the food. And this is after already driving out there, arriving, finding a park, getting in. So this was unusual for these restaurants. And I saw this across the board longer waits a lot of customers waiting in the restaurants last year i didn't see it like this but this year i, I definitely noticed it because i didn't do any other signs last year on the lead up through so that observation tells me that people do have the money to order from restaurants uh, they're lazy on the lead up to christmas maybe a lot of them are on holidays or they just don't want to make their own food so close to christmas they're saving it all for christmas day which means they're going out to the restaurants, ordering food in for themselves or their you know, family or friends, whoever's coming around just to relax and take it easy. But a lot of them weren't using the gig apps. They're all driving in themselves. So is that an inflationary cost from the gig apps? Making people second guess just using delivery services and driving in themselves because the prices have gone up through the roofs. Like, I don't know, guys, what's your thoughts around that? Do you think people are inclined now to avoid delivery apps because of the cost and driving themselves and wait around for that 20, 30 minutes to get their food to save a couple of dollars as opposed to using us as a service. I, I just thought it was interesting seeing that amount of people in normally stores that are not so busy. Fourth observation was storm season across Christmas. So uh, I, I guess first point is Cairns up north had Cyclone absolutely ripped through it. Uh, guys from Cairns tuning in, let me know what it was like up there. How'd you just go? How'd you just cope? All I see is news reports coming through from the major news channels. Uh, but I did see the DoorDash shut down the zones in Cairns, and I was happy they did that because I was like, that's great. That's safety for the drivers. Uh, that means it's not incentivizing people uh, with peaks or anything like that to go out there in cyclonic conditions, in dangerous conditions, in flood water to try to do deliveries. It's saying, hey guys, we're shutting it all down. Stay at home, stay safe. And when we think it's good, we'll reopen the zones back up. I saw in the groups, a lot of people were like, just trigger ready to get back on the app. Um, and yeah, man, like you said, like, why is it not up yet? Why is it not up yet? Why is it not up yet? Uh, for the Cairns drivers um, after the cyclone had passed through. So I know you were trigger ready, but damn guys, like, you know, like take a day, take two days off, just relax, focus on yourself, focus on your family, on your friends, on your home. You just had a cyclone move through, that's a major event. But uh, it, it was good to see DoorDash did close the zones down. I was watching that very closely to make sure they, they kind of did. Uh, I would have had a bone to pick with them if they did not close it down because I don't want drivers going out there on a cyclone trying to deliver KFC around for a couple of dollars. It's not worth their safety. It's not worth their health. It is dangerous to do. So it was good they shut it down to remove all them 
uh, incentives or the, the the drivers who would just you know rain hail or shine just head out there and do deliveries. Um, there was a, a stern fine line to stop it, so it was good to see. Secondly, around Christmas, um, well actually Christmas Day, that just happened. Uh, major storm cells came through southeast Queensland. Uh, I think 130,000 homes were out of power and stuff. So I was checking in and watching the group, and it seems like that quite a few houses. Um, <laughs> 130,000 houses initially, but um, houses and restaurants uh, were all out of power on blackouts. So people were trying to order through the gig apps to get food delivered and some of these restaurants couldn't service the orders. So that was a bit of a jam up. So Christmas weather season, uh, normally, normally this bad weather comes through on January. So it feels like it's a little bit early this year. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think it normally comes through on January? Or I, I know we do get December storms sometimes, but I don't know, it just feels feels earlier than the last couple of years. But yeah, then blackouts have affected restaurants, caused driver wait times, caused restaurants not to be able to service certain foods. I know some threw on Jenny's and some threw on, uh, you know, had backup power and stuff like that just to keep stuff going through. But there were certain things they couldn't do. I was watching a couple of the uh, Gold Coast drivers uh, voicing their concerns in the groups, saying, I can't do this, can't do that. Um, now this restaurant's horrible wait time. Customers who had power outs were all moving into areas that did have power on to get food, to go to the restaurants, like the McDonald's, the KFCs, the fast food places, to get food because their power's all out, their fridges are all out, their ovens are off, they need food. So they're all driving in themselves to get it, causing jam ups and delays again. But uh, that was my Christmas observation, guys. I guess take it in as, you know, these things could happen, these things can happen. Uh, these things I've observed. I, I think the shop and deliver is probably the biggest takeaway. I want to hear what you guys think. I don't think, from what I observed, that shop and delivers are worth it on that lead up to Christmas when everyone goes mad uh, shopping like it's the end of the world, dude. Rushing into Woolworths and Coles and all the supermarkets, jamming it all up just to buy one day's worth of food uh, because nothing's going to be open the following day. Plus, a huge celebration. Everyone wants their Christmas food saved to the last minute to get the freshest. So, yeah, I don't think it would be worth waiting for 30 minutes to do a shop and deliver and then drop it off and then go back in, do another shop and deliver, uh, wait 30 minutes and then drop it off for them lineups to the checkout. I think that's just a little bit brutal. I'd be curious to see how the gig ups address this next year because I'm sure there are a lot of drivers that got caught out by this and it's left a bitter taste in their mouth. But let me know your thoughts down below. Was there anything this Christmas period that you noticed that impacted your driving or made your driving better? Uh, leave it down below in the comments. Keen to hear what you guys think. Let's share this information around. We're a community online. Uh, we want Australian drivers tuning in here to have the best opportunity to make as much money as possible. Okay, so that's all for today, guys. Hope you had a great Christmas day. Um, those who did work, let me know how you did do on Christmas Day. Um, was it busy? Was it not busy? I didn't work. I spent time with friends and family. I deliberately took the day off because I am in a recharging kind of zone right now, getting fresh for 2024 to go absolutely ham, bro. We're going to go absolutely ham 2024. Uh, that is my year to earn money out there. But let me know how you went on Christmas Day if you did work. And that, guys, take it easy, drive safe, and Peace out. I've got a joke. Oh, you're normally not very good at these. Knock, knock. Who's there? A delivery driver who hasn't subscribed to Chris. A delivery driver who hasn't subscribed to Chris who? No, not Chris who, Chris boy. And he's got more videos to watch over there. Wait, that's not how that joke works. La la la, can't hear you mate. I've just clicked up there into the next video and I'll see you in the next one. You guys are lucky. I've got to put on a fat idiot every single week. Hit the like and subscribe button and maybe one day in the future you'll get to see me throttle him.